Men standing, let's pray together. Father, it is so good and so refreshing to uh, come before you and uh, just to, uh, to just to recognize that we're talking to the creator of the universe. And sometimes that's an overwhelming thought. Uh, so, Father, we're asking you uh, right now that you help us. Um, your word says that without you we can do nothing. We believe that. We want to worship and we want you to be honored. We want you to be honored in everything that's said here today. Lord, all of us came in here with different cares and different burdens. And uh, uh, I know that you care about everything that's going on with us. So right now, Father, I would ask that, that you would meet us right here, right where we are. We thank you and pray in Jesus' name.
we celebrated just a couple of weeks ago, Palm Sunday, everyone greeted Jesus with great joy. They were very happy to have their king had arrived. And they were very filled with the Holy Spirit waving the palms. They didn't realize it on that Friday when he died and darkness came. God was still providing. And then on Sunday, he rose. And when he rose, we received peace. We received it. On that night, before he died, they had a Passover meal. And they broke bread. And he blessed it. And he says, this represents my body, which would be shed for you. And then after the meal, they poured the wine, and he blessed it. And he says, drink this, this represents my blood, which will wash away your sins. Let's go to the Lord's Prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for being able to come and worship you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the sacrifice that your Son, Jesus Christ, gave for all of us on Calvary's cross. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that when we take this, take this communion, we are worthy of it, and we truly know the meaning of it. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for all that you Thanks for your in Jesus Christ, most dear and precious name. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank right, you. We'll go ahead and stand back up, and we will continue with worship. <laughs>
I guess this week, uh, I guess Friday, was probably one of the hardest days uh, that I've had in a little while. It was a Friday morning, actually. It was just, just that morning. And when I say that, what I mean is watching people who are going through some real struggles. I would venture to say that everybody here probably has things in their life that they would really, really, really like God to touch. That you would really like God to uh, to show himself and to help you with. I would venture to say that would be the, the truth. Uh, so Friday was, was one of those interesting days where uh, the first thing in the morning I come across a lady who's got her son that's he's, he's intubated. He has life-sustaining support and she's so burdened for her son and, and, and they're going to what they call extubate to take those things off and and she doesn't know how he's going to respond once that happens. Uh, and then you, I run into um, a, uh, a, le- uh, a lady that has her, she's been married for 53 years, and, and uh, he's uh, passing, he's dying. And then I go and I see a, uh, a man again who, uh, who has nobody to sit with him, and he's passing, and uh, there were just several things, and those were just some of the things that I was experiencing um, uh, besides other things that went on. But the, each one of these, were the burdens were just really, really heavy. And, uh, and, 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 and when I think about us, I know that uh, whether we are in one of those situations right now or something is just, just waiting, that something is just uh, uh, holding you back or something that is just uh, consuming your thoughts, I'm sure that probably everyone here has something that they just, they just, you know, they just would love for God to, to take and to help and to rescue. And uh, this morning, I, what, what, I, what I generally do when I'm looking at a passage is I just look for the principles that are there that, that seem to be the same principles throughout the scripture. They're just, they're, they're just they're in other places that I could easily go to. And, and that's what I do. And, and I, I, uh, I kind of stop at three usually. Uh, sometimes that's all I can find. Sometimes I find 12. But I just kind of look at, uh, at some things that I think would apply to me would apply to you. And so some things that I noticed uh, in, in the passage is that, that, that again, that there are, there are those times that there are experiencing experiences that are excruciating. Uh, they, are, uh, they are overwhelming to us. And, uh, and, and, and so that was one thought because this passage is talking about uh, a, a boy that apparently has a spirit within him, and, uh, and, and, and nobody could help him. This boy had had the spirit that was causing all kinds of physical problems and causing him to have, uh, basically have seizures and all of these different kinds of things that are going on in his life, or his foaming at the mouth, he'd lose control, he'd throw himself in fire or in water, and I imagine they had to rescue him, and he had been this way for a long time. And uh, and so the story goes that that uh, uh, this this man had brought his son, and and they were looking for Jesus, but they found the disciples, and they brought him to the disciples, and the, they brought this boy to the, to the disciples, and the disciples were unable to help him. And they really couldn't figure out why. why. Why couldn't they? They had experienced things like that before. Why couldn't they do it? Jesus had actually told them to go and cast out demons, but why couldn't they do it this time? And, uh, and then, then the, uh, while, while they were dealing with this with the disciples, Jesus wasn't there just yet, but the scribes or the religious leaders um, who, were, who were constantly trying to trap Jesus, they had come upon the disciples. And it says that they were disputing with them. 
And I imagine that disputing probably had something to do with ag agitating them about the fact that they couldn't uh, throw out this demon. That's what I imagine happened. Um, and you can read it, we're going to read it in just a moment. But the story is really interesting. And then Jesus is just rather frustrated with these folks because some of them were just wanting him to do a miracle because they wanted to see a miracle. And this, this, this father just wanted help, and he was desperate. And, uh, and then the disciples were trying to figure out, why couldn't we do it? You know, and there's all kinds of things going on there. And let's read the story beginning in verse 14, and it goes like this. And when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them, and the scribes disputing with them. And immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed, and they ran to him and greeted him. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? He was going to protect his disciples, verse 17. Then one of the crowd answered, I mean, he spoke up and said, look, teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit, and wherever he, it seizes him, it throws him down, he foams at the mouth, he gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. <clears throat> he answered him and said, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to, to him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at his mouth. And he asked his father, How long has, has this been happening to him? And he said to him, From childhood. And often he has thrown him both, in, both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and he said with tears, a great prayer by the way, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people were running together, he rebuked the unspirit, unclean spirit, saying to it, deaf and dumb spirit, <coughs> I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. And the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly and came out of him. And he became as one dead, so that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and he lifted him up and he arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. And so I wanted to share these thoughts with you that, that, that can you imagine this father dealing with this particular situation since the, 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 he was a boy. I don't know how long that was. I really don't. We could, it maybe it's been five years. It could have been 10. It could have been 15. I don't know. Can you imagine three days? But he, he'd been dealing with this since he was a boy. And oh my gosh, this father was desperate when he had heard about Jesus. And then he was, he was desperate. He wanted, he wanted to be helped. He couldn't find Jesus, so he asked the disciples. The disciples were unable to do it. And really, this whole story is really about, about faith building. It's about faith building. I'll say that again. It's about faith building. The stuff that you go through, the things that you experience, is about faith building. He wants your faith to become stronger and more useful. And so that not only do you get to enjoy him, but you get to see him work in your life and in the lives of the people around you. And a lot of people take this verse in this passage and they, they, they take it and use it in such a way that God did not intend it. It's one of those things that you want to be real careful about to take one verse and then just make all kinds of stuff out of it. But, and he said, you know, look, if you, if you believe, if you have faith, anything is possible. You see, it, it doesn't mean that you and I can go and conjure up faith and say, I believe, I believe, I believe. No, 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 that's not what it's talking about. It's not about telling God what he's going to do. Because God has a will, God has a purpose, and he has a plan. 
And a lot of times you and I have to wait. We have to wait. It's one of, it's one of the beauty, it's one of the, the beautiful things about faith is waiting. Waiting. Waiting on him. Waiting with him until his time. Until the time comes. And so he wants us to, he wants us to recognize, yes, there are those difficult times. You know, sometimes you and I, we have to, uh, you know, sometimes faith will help us to get out of a situation or help us to, uh, to, to, for God to do something really fantastic. And we're going, God, thank you for, you know, just taking care of all that. Sometimes faith is just going to, just going to walk with you through it. He's just going to, he's going to, he's going to abide with you. He's going to, he's going to allow you to walk through the fire and he's going to, he's going to help you through that fire. He's going to help you through that struggle. Guys, every, and listen, the more you learn the scriptures, the, the stronger you're going to become in faith. You're, the stronger you're going to become. Why is that? Because when we look at the scriptures, we constantly see men and women that are dealing with struggles and how they dealt with. Sometimes they dealt with them unbelievably fantastic, and then sometimes they dealt with them, they didn't deal with them very well at first, but then God has to do some training and some working, and he, and he helps them through that. And so, as I uh, like what Paul said earlier when he talked about coming with joy and leaving with peace, i got to tell you, there is a work of God that does that. He does that. He does that very, he brings joy to a life that they're really surprising that they have joy. He brings peace where there is turmoil all around them. He brings peace. Um, uh, so faith doesn't always deliver you from the sorrows, but he'll certainly walk with you through those sorrows. Um, uh, I was reading the story, R.C. Sproul had written about a guy who had cerebral palsy and he was a man of faith. But he really had a hard time getting around. He had a hard time. It was a, it was a struggle for him to walk from one end of the room to the other. But boy, did he love Jesus. And some of his friends came to him and said, hey, brother, we, we believe that God wants to heal you of this. We believe that God wants to heal you of this. And so they came and they got around him and they laid their hands on him and prayed. And, uh, and he still had cerebral palsy uh, after they got done praying. He still had cerebral palsy the next week. And, and he came to Pastor Spruill and he said, Pastor Spruill, man, what, you know, am, am I, is, have I done something to get this? Have I, is this something? And because and what those guys had said is, you don't have enough faith. That's why you're not healed. No, no. no. No, no, if that were the case, then there would, maybe, maybe there was enough faith in those guys. There's a passage I want to I read with you. This is, I want you to know that I'm in this journey, and I love this journey. I am enjoying this part of my journey. I'm learning about prayer all the time. And I'm learning about it through, through praying. I'm learning about it through the Word of God. And it's fun. It's a fun journey. It's fun. And uh, I want you to look at 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, and it says this. It's just amazing. Uh, verses 14 and 15. I want you to catch this because this is really good. Uh, because we're going to put this in the context of uh, anything you ask. Jesus said it in different places. Ask in my name and I'll do it. But let's talk about that. Look at verse 14. It says, now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, <laughs> there it is, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we ask of him. Isn't that great? Let me, let me, let me, let me help you with something that's really cool, something that's really kind of uh, it's profound, is that, for example, you say, God, I don't know exactly what the will of God is. All right. Romans 8 says that, uh, that, that God helps us with our prayers because he knows the will. Let's say it again, Romans 8, 26. God knows, the Spirit of God knows what the will of God is, and he helps us with our prayers. A lot of times listening is a really good idea. But here's what I want to say to you. 
that I think is really important. And that is that uh, uh, when this is the simple truth. If you want to, for example, we know what to pray for, that we know what is his will, and you know you're going to get it. Okay, you ready for this? God wants you, for example, to love your enemies. I don't know about you, but I can't do that. I have a hard time doing that. Am I, I mean, can I get a witness? I'm just kidding. You know, right? Now think about it. Sometimes we have a hard time loving the people that are right there that we love. And, and we're trying to love them. Come on. Here, watch this. Here, watch this. You go, Lord, would you, would you help me to love my enemies? You better hang on. You know why? Because you just prayed the will of God. Now, if you're serious about it, I'm not talking about just saying words. I'm talking about if you're kind of like this guy that want to get rid of this demon out of his son. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Lord, I need you to do. If you're going to come to God like that, that's a whole different story. I've shared this with you before. My youngest son always wanted a horse. And I got to tell you, for years and years and years, I couldn't afford a horse. Right? And I didn't know even know what to do with it if I got it. I'm going to put it in my front yard. What am I going to do? And, but I always knew, because he always asked for a horse. I never got him a horse, by the way, but it's because he left us. Uh, but I just want you to understand that, uh, that, that, that I was going to give him a horse. I mean, that was, that was all there was to it. I just had to find the time, and I mean, find the money. That's why you got to have money and, and the place to put it. But you take, a, you take his child, and you're saying, Lord, man, will you help me with this? Would you help me with this? I mean, look at the scriptures. I mean, what, what, what he wants. Hey, he wants you to have peace. He said, my joy I give to you. Then you hang on to him. You pray the will of God. Pray it. God, I want your joy in my life. No, 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 no. I mean, don't just pray it on, on, on Sunday and then, 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 then four weeks later think, well, you know, he never did give that to me. No, no, no. Get up on Monday morning and say, God, I, I want that joy that you're talking about. I want your joy. I don't want mine. See? You can pray the will of God that way. Now, sometimes, I gotta, I'll be honest with you, when I go in and I pray with people, uh, you know, uh, there are times that I've got this incredible peace about when, when I'm praying about with this person, about for this person that's got this illness. i got to tell you something. If you go and you watch Paul, there's not, there, the prayers are not a lot about, Lord, would you heal so-and-so? There's not a lot of prayers like that at all. But you know a lot of them are? God, would you help this person spiritually? <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm generalizing there, but I'm saying, you know, give them power to overcome this. Give them, you know, the hope of the calling that, that we have in Christ Jesus. You follow the prayers, they're a little different than what you and I tend to pray for. We tend to pray for the temporal, and he's wanting the eternal. He's wanting the eternal good going on in the souls of man. Um, and so, so, God, anything's possible to him. So sometimes I feel like when I go into a room and somebody's ill, this is one of the things I'm doing. I am saying, God, would you have favor on this person? I know that you have favor, but I'm asking, would you have favor? I don't know God's will in every situation. He may be doing something in that person's life, or he may be doing something in the loved one's life. I don't know what all he's doing, but I'm still going to ask for favor for that person that God would bless them and make them well. But we don't get to tell God what he's going to do. You, you, don't, you, you and I do not conjure up the faith. I, gotta, I believe that. All right, I believe. No, no, no. You don't conjure up faith. It's a far more spiritual experience than that. It is, uh, the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, it says, For by grace you're saved through faith. That not of yourselves is the gift of God. That's why this guy said, and the disciples said another time, uh, that's why they said, uh, uh, why this guy said, Lord, I believe, but help man believe, you know. Why? Because he's the one who, who, who strengthens your faith. It's him. And it's always been him. Let's see. Um, by the way, can I just say this before I go to my second point? Um, is that... Uh, Satan, now you can look at this story. This guy's got some kind of, I mean, some of you nurses, we've got several nurses in here. Uh, you know, uh, some of that can be explained medically, uh, seizures and epilepsy and all that kind of thing. 
But here's what I find in the, in the scriptures is that, one, we don't want to give Satan credit to, for everything. You know, something, something happens, something, all the devil did it. I, you know, just be real careful about giving Satan credit for all kinds of stuff. But I want you to know, he really does work, and sometimes he has a greater grip on some people than others. Don't know why, I, don't, I, I can only guess and surmise. But let me just say this, that whatever Satan gets involved, whatever, he, he takes things that are bad and he makes them worse. Uh, somebody has a particular sin, he can make it worse he, when he comes in. Whatever it is, he has the ability to make it worse. He can, look, I got, I got abilities to do stuff, you know, anything that, that anybody else can do in the world. You understand that? I, I can, I mean, mankind can do all kinds of crazy, horrible sins. We've seen it uh, all over the world. But what I want you to understand is that what Satan does is he can take something in somebody's life and he can just make it worse. And uh, second point that I want to make is I want you to look at verse 19. Would you look at that back in Mark, uh, Mark 9, 19, and it says this. It says, he answered him and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long should I bear with you? A generation? Think about this with me. A whole generation. Just listen, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be long this morning, but a whole generation can be stripped of faith. Let me tell you, tell you one of the major influences. Are you ready? One of the major influences of why a whole generation can be lost. We're only one generation away from, you know, the church being non-existent. I mean, we, we, we could be. Do you guys understand that every single denomination is, is uh, uh, declining on, on, a, on, a, on a serious decline? Every one of them are. Every one of them. You name them and they're on a decline. Well, there might be this church over here and this church over here that are just growing. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about denominations. They're not... They're dying because we're in a post-denominational generation. But you and I want to be kind of like the psalmist in Psalm 71 who said this in verses 17 and 18. Here's what he said. He said, God, you've been my teacher since I was a kid. He says, don't let me go, you know, in my gray-headed days. I'm paraphrasing. In my gray-headed days, don't let me go until I make known your greatness to the next generation. Let me do that, God. But, but we're just, I mean, a whole generation can be lost. Can I tell you who I think, it's kind of like, like this, I'm going to make a political statement here, if you'll, uh, don't, don't get mad at me, but I want you to know that the, 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 the biggest threat to democracy in this country is our government. I'm just going to say that, all right? The biggest threat to the church, um, uh, to the church uh, becoming a faithless generation, are our leaders. Are our leaders in these churches, including myself and many of you, that we want to draw men after us rather than him? The greatest threat. We want to be a people. Really, all we are is a signpost, man. It's him. That's all we want to do. God, help us to do that. I mean, I'm talking about you and I. We get, we get involved in people's lives. We get, we get involved in their mess. Because we all have it. Thankfully, some people come alongside of me. And people come alongside of you. and Get involved in their mess. Guide them back to him, not to yourself. Because you know what? You really don't have much. He has it all. Wow. Um, and sometimes, I'll say this carefully, I wrote this down, so I'm going to say it. Sometimes parents can live differently at home than they do at church. Be careful about that. Third, third point that I want to make in my final point is this. The impossible is the core of what Jesus does. Everything he does is the impossible. He makes a dead man alive. Not just himself, but he makes us alive. We, we actually become spiritually alive to him. <laughs> and 
man, it's, 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 it's phenomenal. And, 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 and we become so that our satisfaction ultimately only comes from it's crazy how things happen. Uh, in fact, if here in Mark 9, I just want to look, I think, um, in verse uh, yeah, 28 and 29, uh, I want you to catch this. This is really important. It says, and when he had come to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we cast it out? <laughs> and he said that this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. So let's talk about that for just a moment. Why couldn't we do it? And he, and he, and he made a statement. Sometimes what you want to do whenever you're talking to anybody, I'm going I'm to digress for a moment. I'll come back to this. You listen to what they say and kind of then, then, then interpret what they just said. Um, uh, what they just said, like, uh, you know, I was sharing with somebody recently that if somebody says to you, man, you're just gone all the time. Why are you always gone? And they're complaining to you because you're always gone. Why are you gone? You know what they're really saying? They like you and they want you around. Yeah. Right? Well, it's the same thing. What happened here was, Jesus, why couldn't we cast him out? And he said, well, because you need to pray. Because it's not you. It was never you. Any fruit that comes out of your life, it's always him. And you know what? You and I are so prone. We are so prone to uh, uh, take credit for stuff. Man, whoa, look at what I just did. I, 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 I love this passage. I, I've thought about this many times. And this, was, this is an add-on. Uh, but it says here, I just love this. This is just phenomenal. Um, uh, just look, look, oh, I'm in the wrong book. Uh, but watch this. Um, this says this. Uh, you ready? This is so good. I want you to catch this. I'm in Galatians 5, and it says this. Because uh, he's talking about the fruit of the Spirit, man. Love and joy and peace and so forth, right? Um, it says that those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Isn't that great? All right. I want to live in the Spirit. I want to walk by the Spirit. And then the next verse says, let us not become conceited. You follow me? In other words, gosh, man, we, 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 we're, where we see some cool stuff going on in our lives. And he says, oh, by the way, don't get conceited about it. Because it's, it's, in fact, it says it's the fruit of the Spirit. It's not you. You follow me? And so, so, so all things are possible with Him. Jesus said in John 15, 5, without me, you can do nothing. See? Okay. Um, I was reading about a church out in California, and I close with this. Um. Uh, church in California, it was the Korean Presbyterian Church, about 10,000 people. And uh, these, these guys were coming in for a conference, and their conference started at 7.30 in the morning, on a Saturday morning. And uh, it, seemed, it seemed kind of early to these guys that were going to speak, but they were cool with it. They were getting there, but it was a traffic jam. Wow. Man, I thought, wait a minute. They're leaving. They're leaving. He said, they, they said, well, what are they leaving for? We're just, we're just going to start. I, I mean, you know, what's going on? Oh, no, those are the guys, those are the folks that pray every morning. Uh, they just come uh, every morning at 630 and pray. They come to pray, yeah. A thousand of them show up every morning at 6.30 to pray for the ministries of the church and the ministries around, um, around Los Angeles, you see. Isn't that great? You know, uh, I want you to think about this with me for just a minute. What, what do you suppose that's saying about the church? By the way, that church was inspired by the church in Korea. You know, in Seoul, Korea, where they have like 100,000 people or more, maybe a lot more than that by now. But, but nonetheless, uh, what, what, were the, what are they saying by that? Well, they know that they have to have God's blessing. 
It's not based on a man or a woman. It's based upon God. You see? That's what he just taught them there. These things come out by prayer, guys, because you don't do it. Let's pray. Father, um, I thank you for this church. There's a, this, is a, this is a beautiful bunch of people right here. They are so refreshing to be around. But I know it's because of your spirit. I know that. Father, I pray that you would be, you would help me, you would help us be like the, the psalmist in Psalm 71, man. Hey, don't let me go until I can tell the next generation how great you are. Help us. Father, help us. Pray in Jesus' name. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Man, you can look at this scripture, man, and it's just rich stuff. God cares about the struggle that you've got in your life. He cares about it. He knows about it. Would you, would you take it to him right now? And would you take it to him again tomorrow? Pray the will of God. Sometimes it is. It's clear that God wants this person healed. I don't know. Sometimes it's clear that God wants to rescue this person. He wants to restore the soul of that person. God's spoken to you, man. Just uh, rely on him and him alone. Wait on him. Just wait on him. Don't give up. God's spoken to you. You want to pray with me? You want to make this your church home or whatever? I just want you to do it as... As the Lord leads you, would you stand with me, please, as we pray together? Would you stand? We're going to sing together.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we've come with joy. We've received peace. And we thank you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit being with each and every one of us. And we pray for it throughout our week. And help us to come in contact with someone who needs to hear you about you. And we give the good news. We pray this through Jesus and we all say, Amen.